Buying a new Apple computer can be a painful experience, especially if you want a decent amount of storage. Check this out. Upgrading a MacBook Pro from one terabyte to four terabytes costs an eye-watering £1,000. You can buy a whole MacBook Air for that, or a super fast four terabyte NVMe drive like this Crucial P3 Plus, which is currently on Amazon at £250. And that's great, except that you can't just pop an NVMe drive into your MacBook Pro because the storage is soldered on. Now I'll pause here and give you a moment to type an angry comment about how Apple is ripping off its customers and we should all go and buy Windows laptops. Okay, good. Feel better? Marvellous. Now, of course, as I often say, hardware is only half the equation. Software is a big part of the overall consideration. So for those of us who want or have to use macOS, you kind of have no choice but to submit to Apple's obscene pricing strategy. Or do you? What you could do is go with a sensible base level of storage, let's say one terabyte, and then use external SSDs like these Samsung T7 drives that I'm always recommending. That's because they're brilliant and they're really portable. But whilst the speed of these drives is good enough for many tasks, they won't match the internal storage speed of the Apple SSD, and they're not as cheap as NVMe drives. So to get the speed, you might go with a Thunderbolt enclosure and then put an NVMe drive in it. Except these can be really expensive and then you're limited to using it with Thunderbolt hosts. Now that's fine if you're only using Mac, but what if you want to copy files to a Windows machine that doesn't have Thunderbolt? And here's where USB 4 comes to the rescue. It's backwards compatible with older USB standards, but also offers those faster speeds on USB 4 and Thunderbolt hosts. Perfect. Except here we hit another hurdle. These fast NVMe drives can get really hot under heavy usage. That's not a problem if they're inside a computer with active cooling, but it's not ideal in a small enclosure with no fan. In fact, I've had this one get to the point where it stops working because it gets too hot. Now, in fairness, I was using it to record 6K raw video for an extended period, but that is something that the humble T7 drive can do without issue. But here's where this USB 4 enclosure from Queeslab comes to the rescue. Now, it's designed to be large enough to keep thermals in check without becoming so large that it's awkward to carry around. So let's check it out to see if it works as advertised. Now, remember that uh, crucial 4TB drive I mentioned earlier? Well, I managed to pick one of those up during the Amazon sales for just £200. And this Queeslab enclosure comes in at just under 100 now, full disclosure, I was sent this review sample without charge, but Queeslab haven't paid me, they won't get to see this video before it goes live, so I'm free to give you my honest opinion. And I think we should get straight to a thermal test. And I'm going to use this smaller Orico enclosure as a comparison. Which of these is going to perform better and what temperatures are we likely to see? So let's run Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and we'll take a temperature reading at the start, then one at three minutes, six minutes and nine. Room temperature today is about 21 degrees centigrade. This isn't a completely scientific test because the Orico enclosure has a smaller and slower drive in it, but actually that should be to its advantage. Now, as you can see through the test, there's around about a 10 degree difference at every measurement point. So yes, it does seem that this Queeslab enclosure is able to do a better job of thermal management. Keen-eyed viewers will no doubt have been taking note of the drive's performance when we did those tests. I get around 3,500 megabytes per second on write and 2,500 on read. And that compares pretty favorably with the internal SSD on the MacBook Pro. That gets around 2,800 on write and close to 5,000 on read. Now actually that crucial P3 drive can achieve similar read speeds and much higher write speeds if you put it into a computer, but we're paying an overhead price here by connecting it with USB 4. But let's face it, it's more than fast enough and it's even comfortably outperforming the internal SSD for write operations. Of course, you could also connect this enclosure to an older USB 3 host. Now obviously it will run slower, but it will work. And that means that I can easily swap files between my Mac and any other computer. So yes, it is less convenient to have to carry around an external drive, but it seems there are enough benefits to outweigh that minor inconvenience. First of all, it's less than a third of the price Apple charges just to upgrade from one to four terabytes. Secondly, if the SSD fails, you won't have to send your entire computer away to be fixed. 
Thirdly, you can use it with more than one computer, and that's ideal if, like me, you use several different machines. And of course, you can connect it to just about any computer out there that has a USB port. Now, one of the things that we really like about the Mac is the premium build quality. So if you're going to pair an enclosure with it, you really want something that has equivalent quality. And I'd say that this enclosure kind of ticks that box. Installation is really straightforward and everything you need is provided in the box. You get tools to remove the four external screws and the NVMe screw. You get a mounting post and thermal pads, one for the drive and one for the chipset inside the enclosure. Then we've got the enclosure itself, which is all aluminium in construction. And there's also this nice carry bag, so you don't need to worry about scratching anything when you pop the drive into your laptop bag. We also get a simple instruction sheet. Installing the drive is really simple. Just unscrew the enclosure using the provided tool, then mount the NVMe post in the appropriate position for the size of drive we're using. It supports 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280 drives. So whatever you've got, you're covered. So all you need to do next is put your SSD in and use the mounting screw and supply tool to secure it. We can then put the thermal pad on top of the SSD and apply the smaller thermal pad to the chipset. Put the lid back on, screw it back together. It's pretty straightforward, even I can do it. And all that remains is to connect it to your computer using the supplied USB 4 cable. You format the drive and you're good to go. The build quality is excellent and the included cable performs really well. And something I quite like is the addition of this LED indicator so you can see the drive activity. And then on the underside, we've got two rubber strips so it won't slide around on the desk. It's a really nicely made thing and it feels suitably rugged and durable. Performance seems good and the thermal characteristics are certainly better than the uh, smaller enclosure we tested. I mean, as you'd expect. So yes, it's not the smallest external drive solution, but it's by no means cumbersome. And I've been using this pretty solidly for a few weeks now. I've had no issues with it at all. So it seems like a good product. I've put some links in the description if you want to take a look for yourself. But the main win for me here is that we get to stick it to Apple and their profiteering. There's just no justifiable reason for them to charge what they do for storage. It's all part of a carefully calculated upgrade ladder price strategy. Frankly, this solution just feels like a win. It doesn't feel like we're compromising. And with the money that we save over Apple's crazy pricing, you can go and buy yourself a whole M2 iPad Air. Anyway, leave me a comment and let me know what you think. And please consider helping the channel with a like or maybe a dislike if that's how you roll. And perhaps consider subscribing for more tech content just like this. I'll see you again soon for some more geekery.